Alright, so if you clicked on this video, it probably means that you're either looking for a smartwatch or looking to see if the Apple Watch is worth it over budget alternatives like the Xiaomi Smart Band 9. Well, let me save you some time. If you can afford it, just go for the Apple Watch because no third party watch will be able to compare to the Apple Watch if you use an iPhone. And that even includes the 2020 Series 6 watch that I made my comparison with. But if you're still here and really want to know if the Xiaomi Smart Band 9 is worth it, well, in this video, I'll give you the facts and my opinion to make an informed decision. Hello everyone, it's Ragewood and welcome back to another video. First off, I should mention that the comparison with the Apple Watch is just on features they share. The Apple Watch can do a whole lot more than the sub $40 watch, so keep that in mind. And also, by the time you see this video, I would have returned my Xiaomi Smart Band 9 because I got a weird painful blister where the sensors are. Maybe I wore it too tight. Oh, it's just a one-off reaction, but it did scare me enough not to put it on again after I noticed it. Alright, so as someone who's used loads of Xiaomi smart home products, I get excited when I hear about Xiaomi products because they offer really great and affordable alternatives that are sometimes even better than products from other mainstream manufacturers. And they also make everything. Heck, they even make cars, like really good electric cars. And so when I was in the market for a smartwatch to keep track of my health until I can afford an Apple Watch, I was definitely willing to give the Xiaomi Smart Band 9, formerly known as the Mi Band, a fair shot. And I thought, why not compare it to the Apple Watch? So starting with the design, I personally am a big fan of Xiaomi's pill-shaped design and this year they decided to go with an aluminum frame instead of plastic and that makes it look quite premium if I'm being honest. I went for the midnight black because black goes with everything and I loved it. It's like the kind of space black you see on Apple products. The straps however are more firm than soft but I don't mind the button clasp at all. Of the 5 days that I wore it to sleep to track my sleep, it came off just once but I think I might have taken them off while I was sleeping. It was still able to track my sleep just fine though, maybe because I was still late on it. And as for battery life, I'm writing the script on day 6 and since charging it to 100% when I first opened the box, today was the only other day I had to charge it again because it was at 10% this morning. And it went from 10% to 100% in less than 30 minutes which I was actually quite surprised by. If you leave all the sends as it comes and don't turn on a bunch of things like advanced sleep monitoring and always on display like I did, Xiaomi says it could last up to 21 days. In fact, if you go into battery settings on the watch and turn on battery saver, it says it can last up to 38 days. That's more than a month, albeit only the clock and step count will be available. When it comes to the specs, it has a 1.62 inch 192 by 490 resolution 60 hz display that goes up to 1200 nits of brightness. That's more than bright enough, even for the sunniest of days, not that we have very much of that here in England. And for a 35 pound smartwatch, it sure does come with more than I expected. For instance, you can set timers and alarms, check the weather and even use it as a shutter button for your camera in the stock camera app and even in other camera apps. And you can also use it to control your music on any music app. The weird thing though is that it doesn't seem to have a speaker nor a microphone. So while you'll be able to see your incoming phone calls, you'll only get a button to reject the call. So that means you need to pull out your phone to answer the call. Oh and the vibration motor is actually pretty good if you set it to strong in a sense. You do feel it only at the top of the watch though instead of vibrating the entire device. And you'll be able to see your notifications that you select on the phone app to show on the watch but you won't be able to act on them. You'll only be able to dismiss them which does not dismiss them from your phone. The battery is 233 mAh and this is not really a feature but the magnetic charger is way too short and only works one way. You'll definitely feel the magnets repelling each other when you try to use it the wrong way. Not that it matters as much because you'll only be needing it for about 30 minutes every fortnight or so. The Smart Band 9 also has an accelerometer and a gyroscope which work together for step count and workouts. It also has an optical heart rate sensor to monitor your heart rate and pulse oximetry or SpO2 and an ambient light sensor to control the auto brightness. All of its features work on iOS but a few of them like music control don't work with every Android device so do check the list on Xiaomi's website. And on both iOS and Android, the watch connects via Bluetooth to the Mi Fitness app which I find to be pretty straightforward and gets the job done. The watch weighs 15 grams without the straps and it can survive underwater up to 5 ATMs so you can definitely go swimming with it or even take it for a shower. Now onto the health features, the Xiaomi Smart Band 9 supports 150 plus sport modes of which I used it to track 3, golf, walking and outdoor running. It can also measure your heart rate and blood oxygen saturation and it has all day monitoring for both of these features that I think can be very useful. It is also somehow able to measure stress. I tried it once and it gave me a stress score of 31 which it says is mild stress. Well, whatever that means. 
All right, so now with the comparison with the Apple Watch, my wife uses the Apple Watch religiously, so I only had one day to compare them. So I only compared the similarities of the few features they both share, and also got an overall all day step and calorie count. I was at home all day working on a separate video, and then later went to Hall Fair, which is one of the largest traveling fairs in Europe, and so got a few steps in. Starting with the main health features, heart rate monitoring and oxygen saturation were pretty consistent on both watches, with oxygen saturation mostly being 100% on the Apple Watch and 99% on the SmartBand 9. You'll also notice that the Xiaomi takes longer than the Apple Watch to measure oxygen saturation, but that was about all they agreed on. At the end of the day, I had burned 444 active calories on the Apple Watch and 758 calories on the SmartBand 9. Step count was also off by about 2,000 steps with the Apple Watch recording 6,605 steps and the SmartBand 9 recording 4,688 steps. Mind you, I wore both watches on the same wrist all day. I wasn't trying to do a scientific test or anything, I just wanted to see how different or similar they'll be, but I think I'll trust the Apple Watch more with calorie count and the smart band more with step count. Maybe because with these kinds of readings, being conservative may be better, as neither device is actually accurately measuring these metrics, they are merely guesstimating with gyro, accelerometer and heart rate data. I started the day with the Apple Watch at 97% battery and the Xiaomi at 24% and by the end of the day, the Apple Watch was at 38% while the Xiaomi was at 17%. But take that with a grain of salt as the Apple Watch has been in daily use for almost 3 years and still maintains an all day battery life. And up until a few months ago, it had a 2 day battery life until it was left on charge for over a week and that's when the battery noticeably dropped. Well now, as for my recommendation, I guess it goes without saying that the Apple Watch is more than just a fitness tracker. You can do loads with it if you have an iPhone, especially with the new Series 10 watch released last month. The Xiaomi SmartBand 9 though seems more like a stripped down exercise tracker with a few other features, but for the money I think it's definitely worth it if you want to get into fitness tracking with a very low budget. You're not going to be able to get ECG readings or fault detection or most of the other premium features you'd get with an Apple Watch, but it's also a fraction of the price so I guess that's fair. But then if you have an iPhone and you can swing for the Apple Watch, I'd say go for it. It doesn't have a 21 day battery life but it will do a whole lot more for that premium price. Well there you have it guys, if you enjoyed this video make sure to check out my iPhone mirroring video right here. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, ciao.